one of the most awarded musicians in music, with 24 Grammys, 13 number one studio albums out, but did you know that Kanye has almost double that in unreleased albums? And it's because of something I like to call the Kanye cycle. It starts off with news that an album is being worked on. Kanye announces the album and a date, heavenly snippets start to drop better than anything you've ever heard before, the album gets delayed, and then Kanye just sends everything into a black hole void and presses delete on the entire thing. So let's go through the story of every single Kanye album that never made it off the hard drive. Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Before Kanye was even signed to Jay-Z's record label Rockefeller, he had a four album plan, but only three of them were ever released. This was College Dropout, Late Registration, Graduation, and then the final album to the College series, which was never released, Good Ass Job. This album's theme was obviously to tell the story of Kanye finally getting a job after graduating, well, with graduation. Kanye told people about this plan, and the album was even mentioned on the song Graduation Day on the college dropout. So this was a pretty big plan for a while. Kanye even had another song straight up called Good Ass Job on his album Rhyme Fest. Obviously, Kanye's fourth album ended up being 808s and Heartbreaks. So what happened to change this pretty sought out plan that Kanye had for literal years before he even stepped into the ring rapping? Well, there were two pretty good reasons that most fans believe to be why this never dropped. And these were some of the most life changing years for Kanye as a person and musician. Before Bianca, before Kim, Kanye had another girlfriend, fiance even, fashion designer Alexis Pfeiffer. After being engaged for a year and a half, Kanye and Alexis split up in April 2008. Along with this breakup, which happened a few months before 808s dropped, two weeks before it dropped, Donda West, Kanye's mother, passed away from a surgery malfunction. 808s and Heartbreaks then dropped on November 24th, 2008. These two events shifted everything for Kanye, and ever since this moment, his music and him as a person have never been the same. Kanye continued to work on Good Ass Job after 808s and Heartbreaks eventually dropped, but after the events that happened to him, the general public saw him spiraling. One of the most infamous Kanye events that happened during this time was the Taylor Swift incident at the VMAs. I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Extreme criticism and backlash came to Kanye from the media because of this, derailing things even more for his next album. Good Ass Job was still expected to drop, but it never did, most likely due to the album quadrilogy being broken up and interrupted by 808 and his controversies as well. Which shows some important symbolism for Kanye's life being interrupted by everything else, on top of his music, which I guess is a good thing because we got my beautiful dark twisted fantasy after it in this timeline so you can't really complain. Kanye had something to prove, and this was him proving, well, that he is him. He officially scrapped the idea of Good Ass Job around this time saying he wanted to do something different, no skits, and then we got My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. There were many iconic songs from the Good Ass Job era that ended up on My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. First versions of songs like Runaway, Hell of a Life, and even Flashing Lights 2, which were later sold to a K-pop group? Songs like Mama's Boyfriend were also created during this era, sampling Billy Joel, which is probably why it would never go to release. Along with all of this, the iconic leak, See Me Again, was also from this era. Don't worry about me, worry about you, worry about Samba Thumb, but we'll do, and motherfucker. It'll be a long time before you ever see me again. And this song had a pretty morbid meaning, especially knowing the backstory of everything that was going on in Kanye's life at this time. His mother passing, fiance leaving, the whole media piling on top of him to defend Taylor Swift. It was meant to be the final song on Good Ass Job, and a lot of fans consider this to be an unalive note in the form of a song. Luckily, that never happened, and Kanye went on to drop Watch the Throne with Jay-Z. George Bush doesn't care about black people. I gotta test
after Watch the Throne and the creation of his label album with good music, Cruel Summer, Kanye started working on his next solo album which never ended up releasing. Thank God for drugs. Recording started in 2012 and went on through the next year as well, and it has a pretty long track list containing over 20 songs being a 3 hour album. Some of these tracks even included Travis Scott's Upper Echelon which had a Kanye feature at one point. Obviously not high quality, but it could have been fired. And Kanye was tapped in with Travis for a while at this point, forcing him to eat sour cream even though he hated it. Weird fact, but it exists. He's like, yo, you gotta try this taco, man. He's like, it's crazy, but it had like sour cream on it and I don't like sour cream. And so I ate it and when I bit it, I was like, oh my God, I almost like threw up. And Thank God for Drugs has one of the coolest covers out of all the unreleased in my opinion. Here's a better look at it and even an animation for it. This is also what looks to be the CD inspiration for the cover of Yeezus. Rick Rubin from Def Jam had Kanye bring down the track list of this album to less than 10 songs and bring the album into one complete direction. Thank God for Drugs eventually turned into what we know today as Yeezus. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. After Yeezus, Kanye went on to quickly work on a lot of different projects. Around this time period, there were a lot of albums in the making all happening at the same time. Cruel Winter, a sequel to Kanye's Cruel Summer album, was one of the main focuses, but most of the info came from insiders who were not very reliable, so there isn't much to say about that project. So little is known about this album, there isn't even a concept cover. But there was something more important being made at the time, Yeezus 2. Yeezus 2 was basically an extras cut from Yeezus. Like I said before, Rick Rubin had Kanye refine and cut down the track list to have everything go in one single direction, but the songs were too good to scrap, so right after Yeezus was released, Lost Yeezus, the cut songs were teased as an EP. Some of these songs are Kanye and more Travis Scott classics. Songs from Rodeo like Piss on Your Grave. I use the faces of urine. Then do the same at your funeral. And even the black skinhead Everybody Wants to Rule the World remix with Miley Cyrus. Everybody wants to rule the world. There were so many songs that it eventually turned into an entire album which was considered by the fans as Yeezus 2, but everything eventually turned into his next unreleased album, So Help Me God. Alright Kanye, give us three things that are hairy. Balls, balls, balls. <laughs> So Help Me God was pretty much Yeezus 2, but a lot more developed. Some of the teaser tracks are some more Kanye classics we know today. Wolves, All Day, Only One. All Day was released as a single for So Help Me God, and the lore behind this song is absolutely insane. Originally starting as a Paul McCartney song, Kanye heard the melody from McCartney whistling in the studio, which explains the sample at the end of the song. And this was most likely heard during the recording of another Kanye hit, 4-5 Seconds, which also took place during this time. A collaboration originally supposed to be a solo Kanye song, but eventually turned into a Rihanna mega hit. Just like many other albums, Kanye never finished this one. Most of the songs were scrapped, but a lot of the songs end up in other places. 4-5 Seconds dropped as a single as well as the song Smuckers, which ended up on Tyler the Creator's Cherry Bomb. The other tracks which were saved by Kanye from this era end up on his album The Life of Pablo. But we're not quite there yet, because before The Life of Pablo was Swish. To all my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. Now this is where things kind of get confusing because Swish is technically So Help Me God just with a name change and So Help Me God is technically Yeezus 2 but it's also another album called Waves but even though they all technically are the same thing the music is completely different. We even got to see a full track list for Swish containing a few songs from the life of Pablo just with different names like Nina Chop which eventually turned into the song Famous which bred from the Taylor Swift incident. Most of the songs created for Swish were made in late 2015 
Some of the songs from the Switch era are early versions of No More Parties in LA, and one of the most infamous Kanye leaks, Can You Be, which very recently leaked for around $30,000 and had a completely different name being called Pressure. Be, can you be, will you be, can you be, can you be, you be, can you be, can you be, can you be. Even though this is technically the same as So Help Me God and a lot from the Yeezus 2 era of things, if we really want to get into it, what it really represents is the life of Pablo. A lot of tracks that were from these last two years end up on the life of Pablo, Fade, 30 Hours, Ultralight Beam, and more, all from that original Swish tracklist. After the original release of The Life of Pablo exclusively on Jay-Z's streaming service platform Tidal, and then it finally coming to general streaming like Spotify and Apple Music, Kanye goes back to continuing his work on Cruel Winter, his sequel to Cruel Summer that we talked about before. This album really looked like it was going to come out. Travis Scott announced that he was going to be one of the producers on the album. We even saw a single for it, and this single had the Avengers on it, Kanye West, Travis Scott, Gucci Mane, Big Sean, 2 Chains, Yo Gotti, Quavo, and Designer. Wow, that is a lineup. This album was a ton of trap and had literally everyone on it, but there was never any cover art for Cruel Winter, only the single Champions, and none of it was ever released either, mostly because of multiple breakdowns during T-Lop's St. Pablo tour. Oh, and for some reason, Kanye was really obsessed with Designer and the song Panda, so he made a 15-minute remix. This whole project was worked on into late 2017, but this wasn't the only thing going on in 2016. Cause look at Gaga, she's the creative director of Polaroid. I like some of the Gaga songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras? Around the same time, Kanye was working on another album, and this was called TurboGrafx-16, and it was named after Kanye's favorite video game console that he had when he was a kid, and it was announced only two weeks after The Life of Pablo dropped on Twitter. Kanye was going on one of his classic Twitter rants, and smack in the middle of it, this is when he decided to announce his new album. Kanye described Turbo Graphics as super nerd vibes, and the album was meant to sound futuristic using a lot of different types of video game samples. And even though this album did have this sound, there was also a very heavy trap undertone to it. Honestly, a similar sound to another one of Kanye's unreleased albums, Donda 2. This album would also include some unused T-Lop tracks that didn't fit the life of Pablo, but would go well into Turbo Graphics. This era, as interesting as it was, and honestly one of my personal favorites, did not last very long. Kanye began his St. Pablo tour while still working on the album, but things didn't go how anyone thought they would. Kanye was admitted to the hospital and diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Even though this definitely slowed down progress on the album, it still looked to be in the works at the time, with different rappers and producers teasing music, along with videos in the studio, showing off lists of video games that were most likely going to be used as samples for different songs on the album. Some of the songs I picked out from this era to show you guys are cuts like All Eyes on Ye, where you hear those video game synths combined with the trap type vocals and 808s. Bad Nights featuring Young Thug is another fire song from this era, really embracing that trap feel that this project was going for. <laughs> Another one of my favorites is the song Welcome to UCLA, which was written and recorded inside of the hospital that Kanye was admitted to when he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Welcome to UCLA, tell me at UCLA, I'm going, I'm going crazy, baby. Which I think just describes exactly what this era was going to be, hectic unhinged, but things just got slower and slower for Turbo Graphics, and the album ended up just disappearing. No one heard anything, and the album concept allegedly got scrapped. Kanye started to spiral even more, and this started a completely new era, containing some of Kanye's highest regarded albums that were never ever dropped. And this is where the unreleased music really starts pumping, and we see some of Kanye's best work ever. 
It's like, shut the fuck up. I will fucking laser you with alien fucking eyes and explode your fucking head. I am Venice sweat. Probably one of the most unhinged albums that was never released from Kanye is called Love Everyone. And it all started in the new Wyoming era, my favorite era. The concept of Love Everyone came to Kanye in 2018. The Love Everyone cover was revealed to the world on Twitter by Kanye, and it refers to the surgeon that performed the operation that allegedly led to Kanye's mother Donda's death. It also had some other meanings that were possible that we have seen with other album titles involving a lot of Kanye's political views, which kind of foreshadows what happens later in Kanye's career. During this time, as this album idea came to light and started being worked on, Kanye bought a ranch in Wyoming to create all of the music and kind of just isolate himself. Lots of music was being worked on at the same time here, Love Everyone, Kid See Ghosts, and the album Ye. Two singles released during this time for the album. Ye vs. The People, and the infamous Drake diss track, Lift Yourself. Whoop -de -dee -scoop. Scoop -de -dee -whoop. Whoop -de -scoop -de -poop. There were some pretty big leaks from the Love Everyone era that turned into huge songs in the future. Here is the leak Brothers that eventually turned into the song Violent Crimes. And once again, more Travis Scott classics created by Ye. People say I want world peace. Jerome's niece got shot in the dome piece. So Jerome. This era took a close before Ye and Kid See Ghost dropped, and it was mostly because of the backlash of this clip. You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? I don't think I need to explain it. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Love Everyone, I guess you could say, turned into Ye, since they do have similar cuts with songs like I Thought About Killing You, Ghost Town, and Yikes, all being on the original Love Everyone tracklist just as different names, but they are very different themes and were changed a good amount as well, so I would say it's a stretch as Ye goes deeper into things like family, addiction, mental health, and more. And Love Everyone was kind of just a flattened theme of appreciating everyone and forgiveness. And I'm happy this happened because Ye is his best album. My favorite. Argue with a wall. Comment yours below because I know you guys are going to disagree. Am I venturing into the <laughs> Come on. Do you see this cup? Almost a decade later, Kanye revisits an old concept after his album's release, but in a completely different way. Good Ass Job is back, but in the form of a collab album with Chance the Rapper. This album was meant to be similar to Kid See Ghost and Ye as a Wyoming inspired album. It was meant to be short, to have themes of celebration, but it was later cancelled in 2019. Some songs from this era ended up on Chance's failed album The Big Day. There is no cover and little known about this album, but it's completely okay that this album failed. Almost good, because it led to some of Kanye's best unreleased work that we have seen in a long time. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. And now, for what all of you have been waiting for, Kanye's most anticipated lost album, Yandi. Yandi is an unreleased Kanye album that is one of his most infamous unreleased. The album was announced, and delayed, and delayed again, and all took place in late 2018. The album's original release date was September 29th, 2018. Kanye released a single for Yandi, which was the song I Love It, featuring Lil Pump. They performed the song on Saturday Night Live, and following the performance, Kanye went on a political rant which would never be aired. The first version of this album contained a lot of grails for fans, including songs like City in the Sky, and Alien. I gotta sign up. Beam me up. I'm about to sign off. Demotha. Need to take time off. The Yandi era was also the birthplace of songs like Hurricane. Here's the OG version of the song we have today. Seasons changing. Summer starts to leave. Autumn falls on me. Fall, winter, and spring. Which one do you guys prefer? There's so many growls from Yandi. Here's another The Storm. I 
I could go on and on. If you have not already, I encourage you guys to check these out on your own time after the video. But that wasn't the end of Yandi right there, because it never released on that original date. It got delayed, and after the album was delayed, Yandi was obviously still in the works. Kanye did interviews with TMZ speaking on how the project was delayed until November of 2018. So you said the album was coming out on Saturday. It didn't come out. What happened? Um... I didn't finish it. It was taking the album in a completely different direction, wanting more healing music on it. The name was also changed to Yay Superhero Rehabilitation. Why is that low-key hard? <laughs> it was also possible that the song Alien was going to end up as a single, or at the very least, a complete and finished song on the album, because he was referring to himself as an alien in this interview. Kanye worked on songs that would later end up on other albums, one of them being Whole Lot of Red, which he executive produced. Here is a solo go to the moon with only Kanye on it. Ugly hot, like that bitch to call you to borrow. 500, then promise she gon' pay you back tomorrow. The left with a nigga cause he had the Ferrari with the goggles. Fuck the nigga. And Yandi was starting to look like it was going to be finished and actually released. Shortly before the album's release date in November, Kanye had a headline performance at Tyler the Creator's music festival Camp Flogna with Kid Cudi under Kid See Ghosts. But this performance made him realize that Yandi was never finished, causing him to delay the project again. And after this last delay, things changed forever for Yandi and the album would never be the same. So back to that theme change. Well, they went a little bit past healing music if we want to put it that way. Kanye took an enormous conversion to becoming stronger within his faith as a Christian. The Sunday service choir was created and a lot of songs were changed within Yandi to have lyrics that were more Christian coded. Songs like We Got Love show off the compassion and healing Kanye preached during this era change. Compared to things that were released earlier on, which show the opposite, like I love it with Lil Pump. You're such a fucking hoe. I love it. And a lot of people believe that Yandi has never released. But if we're being real, the events of Yandi, Good Ass Job, and even Ye and Kid See Ghosts all lead to what Jesus is King is today. And honestly, as much as people want to complain about Yandi dropping, there are some grails from that era on Jesus is King. My favorite from Yandi was the storm and it dropped as everything we need. There are also other cuts on Jesus is King that were originally Yandi songs. I think the problem with these songs though, being on Jesus is King, is that a lot of people consider the versions on Yandi to just be much better. The storm being one of those. One of the biggest losses claimed by the community was the song New Body featuring Nicki Minaj. It never released during the Yandi era, but then went viral a few years later. Nicki wanted the song to drop, but Kanye declined. A few years went by, and Kanye tried releasing the song during the Vultures 1 era, but then Nicki Minaj didn't want to clear it. Ice Spice then hopped on and did a verse, but her team denied the feature, and it has never leaked, so we have no idea what that sounds like. We don't 100% know the future for this song, but I think at this point it's good as gone and won't happen after so many tries at it actually releasing. And after Jesus is King dropped, a lot of people didn't like that Kanye went from things like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, T-Lop, Graduation, and the Yandi leaks to a very religious album. After it was met with criticism, Jesus is King 2, or Dr. Dre the collab version, was announced and set to release. It was meant to have features from rappers like Travis Scott and Eminem, and was going to be Kanye's first collab with Dr. Dre, which was going to be a huge event within rap. Some huge leaks came out of this album, one of the largest and most renowned being L.A. Monster. L.A. Monster, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And Kanye didn't just stop here. Going deeper into the Christian era, Kanye announces another album, Religion Inspired, which were all being worked on at the same time with Jesus is King 2, God's Country where hits like Future Bounce or now Travis Scott's Telekinesis were created. Other tracks from Donda like Life of the Party, Praise God, and Off the Grid were also created during this time. God's Country eventually all turns into what Donda is today over a year-long rollout. Other songs, like the single that was probably set to release called God's Country was given to Travis Scott. So Donda comes out, what happens next? Donda 2. If you're a Kanye West fan, you're not a fan of me, you're a fan of yourself. But don't think this is actually dropping. The sequel Kanye album curse strikes again and still very much exists. 
I don't know if some would consider this album unreleased since it did technically release on the stem player, but I'm going to talk about it since I can't listen to it on streaming service and that constitutes unreleased to me. Donda 2 was announced on Instagram and was executively produced by Future. This was revealed after Kanye joined Future on stage at Rolling Loud as a surprise appearance and Ye's manager started telling Complex that Donda 2 was officially in the works. There was also a single released at this time as well which was easy featuring the game which had a really weird cover i don't be listening to this song simply because of the cover i hate looking at it but also huge shots at pete davidson after kanye split with his wife kim kardashian kanye also punched a fan at this time so things were just an absolute mess Kanye officially announced the album himself on Instagram of January 2022 and said that he would no longer use his phone until the album dropped. He broke this rule within a few days. More Donda inspired listening parties occurred even with Playboy Cardi getting struck by lightning. This was a really weird era. This show ended terribly since the sound was so incredibly fucked up that Kanye threw his mic into the water on the ground. This one show is most likely the sole reason Kanye does not perform anymore and barely touches a mic. Once this album released on the stem player, the album was meant to be updated and worked on over time, but it was met with such extremely bad reviews, fans hated this, and it was probably because they got scammed by Ye for 200 beans to listen to unfinished music that everyone else could listen to for free. A lot of people thought that Donda 2 would end up into a similar situation as The Life of Pablo, which released on title first and then came to streaming later on, but that never happened. Some of the best cuts of this era are songs like Mr. Miyagi featuring Playboy Cardi and Future with the first debut of Cardi's deep voice. Yeah. Uh. Hey miss, I'm your Mr. Miyagi. I'm a king of chicken in the Blissiyagi. Don't tell me in the morning, babe, I'm groggy. Pablo with Travis Scott. Who they waiting on? That's Pablo. And Selfish, featuring XXX Tentacion and Ski Mask the Slump God. Selfish, I just wish you all to my own. These pieces won't leave me alone. And man, to see what X, Kanye, and I'll even throw someone like Cardi in there could have done together in rap is probably my biggest what if. Along with Donda 2 and Yandi as a whole being some of the biggest what ifs in rap. Why do you this why do you think the song Niggas in Paris is called Niggas in Paris? Cause niggas was in Paris. Stretch my hands to you. Another project that was being worked on during this era is War, but a lot of fans don't even give this album a name since nothing officially ever came out about it. It was a collaboration with James Blake and began mid-2022. Lots of songs were shown off, but one of the more prominent ones was called Always, which was shown in full at a fashion show. Tears come pouring down. Tears come pouring down. This song was later used in Vulture's ads later on. There were a few small clips released on Ye's YouTube channel regarding this album. This is also the time when Ye started getting a lot deeper into talking about political views and getting into more controversies. Later on in December 2022, Kanye says this. I I see I I see good things about her also. The Jew, I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially him. Yeah, that was pretty bad. He then released these small short cuts on his YouTube channel, and we don't know if this was album promotion, but it did just seem like a response to all of his current controversies at the time. But eventually, Kanye gets dropped by Adidas, loses his Gap deal, Donda 2 and War are forgotten and scrapped forever. Which leads us to Kanye's next album, Vultures 1, which releases a year after all of this in 2024, with messed up listening parties, a long and painful rollout, and Kanye's first number one song in a long time. Kanye eventually goes independent, and now we're here. 
current day, waiting on the release of Vultures 2. Meant to release on March 8th, 2024, delayed to May 3rd, and delayed for the second time, and is now nowhere to be seen. This album had a ton of great leaks as well that we are yet to see since it has not released, like Lifestyle, Take off your dress. Slip off your dress, babe, so I can see. Slip off your dress, babe, so I can see. You just got work done. Promotion. Will this album end up like Yandi with its multiple delays? Comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Join my Discord for the best music community on the internet. And on that note, I'm just extremely happy. Can you tell by my face?